It is finally time. Today, I'm going to review the Samsung Galaxy A13. As many of you know, we're looking at one of the cheapest phones made by Samsung and one of the cheapest phones in general, which means, of course, we're not going to find any high-end components or luxurious materials. As you can see, the phone is completely made out of plastic, both at the back and at the sides. And it's also one unified piece of plastic covering everything, which is the cheapest way to protect a phone. Although, to be fair, it looks pretty good on the A13. For those interested, this plastic cover can be configured in three different colors, black, white, or light blue. Besides that, the only visible component we can find in the exterior is the camera set, which is probably my favorite part of the design. I really like how they just made a couple of holes for the cameras, instead of creating a giant block protruding from the back, like in most other phones. Some people don't really like the way this phone looks, because, as I said, it is very simple. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It's one of the best looking Samsung phones I've seen in a while. And also, that simple look is the same one we can find on Samsung's most expensive phones. So yeah, I, I think it's actually a good thing that it looks simple. Anyways, uh, moving on. I think a minute ago I told you the back of the phone is made out of plastic and uh, that's not really 100% correct. This phone is made out of premium plastic that somehow feels better than normal plastic. It's kind of like a mix between glass, plastic and aluminum. In fact, the first time I took it out of the box and held it in my hands, I genuinely thought it was made out of aluminum and the only reason I know it's made out of plastic is because I looked it up on Google. It has a very, very similar feeling. It's, it's, it's hard to describe over a video. You have to touch it in your hands in real life to understand what I mean. But don't worry, because although it is a sort of like futuristic plastic, plastic 2.0, it still has the same properties and advantages as normal plastic, which means it's still impossible to shatter. You can kick it as hard as you can, throw it to the floor, nothing's gonna happen. You can't shatter plastic, it's impossible. Nothing's gonna happen, although, be careful, because the front is made out of glass, and glass does shatter, so if you're gonna use it without a case, I would advise you put like a tempered glass protector on the front. That's at least what I would personally do with this phone. Another feature that I really like is the fingerprint sensor because it's one of the fastest I've tried in my life. It only takes around 0.2 seconds to unlock the phone. And I also like it because it's placed in the middle of the phone, which is great for left-handed people like me. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is speed and performance, which obviously are going to be a little bit tight. As I said earlier, this is a $150 phone, so please adjust your expectations. The Galaxy A13 is meant to be used in a simple and casual way to use social media, send messages, take some pictures, and even to play some simple games. For this types of activities, the phone works incredibly well. And I say this from experience. In all of the time I've been using the phone, doing those simple activities, it's not given me any issues at all and it's worked 10 out of 10 perfectly fine. But if you want to play the most demanding games available at maximum resolution with ultra graphics, well, obviously, you're going to run into performance issues. As I said, this phone is meant to be used in a simple and casual way. So if you're interested in buying it, maybe you should analyze the way you normally use your current phone. That way you'll know if you're compatible with the A13 or if you should aim a little higher, pay more money and get a phone that better fits your needs. Honestly, I believe that 90% of you watching this video are going to be perfectly fine with this phone. As I said, TikTok, 
YouTube, Instagram, messages, normal apps, even games like Clash of Clans or Clash Royale are going to work fine. Unless you're like a special user that does like special stuff like plays the most demanding games available or edits videos on your phone. Unless you're that type of person, you have nothing to worry about. Now I want to talk about the battery. And all I can say is that this phone has one of the best battery lives I've seen in my life. One of the first days that I had the phone, I decided to download some games and apps to test out the performance. And it took me around five hours to finish. Five hours of continuous use of multiple apps at the same time. And at the end of that day, I decided to check the battery percentage I had left. And boom, baby, it was above 50% which is absolutely crazy. It basically means that I could have used it for another five hours the next day and still end up that day with some juice left. For most people, this phone is going to give you at least a two times improvement in battery life compared to the phone you have right now. For now, as you've probably noticed, everything I've said about this phone has been fairly positive. And there's even more positive things to say. But first, I need to talk about something that's not so nice. As you can see at the front of the phone, we can find the old and outdated notch in the middle of the screen instead of the new camera hole, which is what most phones include now and that looks much better. And even worse, the bottom chin is actually like two times thicker than on normal phones, even on this price range. Like nowadays, most phones don't really have one at all. I think we can all agree that the front of this phone looks a little bit dated, which sure, it's fine. It's a minor problem. Most people won't notice or care because the differences are very small, but I don't like it. It looks outdated and in one year, it's going to be even more outdated. The worst part is that, as I said earlier, they nailed the back of the phone. If Samsung had given the same treatment to the front, this phone would be a 10 out of 10. But anyways, that being said, the actual display, what's inside of those bezels, is actually pretty good. It has a nice resolution to be able to read small text without forcing your vision. And it's also very bright. I've tested the phone in multiple conditions, including the most extreme ones. And I was able to see the display and use the phone in all of them, even at 12 AM on a sunny day. Display brightness and resolution are the most important things about the display. That's what 99% of people care about and also what makes a noticeable difference in your experience. Of course, this phone doesn't have any fancy calibration technologies or the latest display panels available, but those are very subtle things that most people would not notice anyways. And also things that would make this phone way more expensive than it is. So yeah, the display is what you need and nothing else, which for 150 bucks, I think is a pretty good deal. Oh, and uh, talking about good deals, right now, if you hurry, you can find the A13 at a very juicy price on Amazon. You'll find a direct link in the description. Okay, now it's time to talk about what I'm pretty sure for a lot of you is the most important part of the phone. I'm going to show you pictures, I'm going to show you videos of each one of the cameras on the Galaxy A13. And I would like to start by talking about this one at the top, the ultra wide camera, which uh, <laughs> as you can see, is a not specially high quality. This camera is a little bit below what I was expecting, to be honest. Maybe with good lighting and a good photographer, you can take decent pictures, but the moment you zoom in a little, you start to notice that every surface is blurry and there's little to no detail. It only has five megapixels, which in 2022 is kind of a joke, but being realistic, it was inevitable that one of the cameras was going to be a piece of trash because this phone is $150. And with that kind of budget, they obviously had to make some compromises. On the video department, it's a little bit better. 
Ultra-wide cameras tend to have very good image stabilization, which means videos don't look wobbly when you move the phone. So if you are in an agitated environment and you wanna take a video, this is probably the camera you have to use. Moving on, of course, we have the main lens, which is supposed to be the best one in the phone. And I am very impressed. It not only looks a lot better than the ultrawide, but it looks in general a lot better than it should. You can probably find similar quality on $300 phones from the competition. There's a lot more detail and way better colors, which I've noticed make a big difference on how the image looks. As you can see, if we compare the same picture taken with the ultra wide camera and the main camera, colors are different. On the main camera, they look more punchy and realistic. It also has a lot more resolution, jumping from five megapixels to 50 megapixels, which is absolutely crazy. It is 10 times as many pixels. And of course, when you zoom in, you immediately notice there's a lot more detail in the pictures. And to top all of these off, as the cream of the crop, it also has a way bigger sensor, which will let you take good photos even if the lighting conditions are not perfect. When it comes to video, as you can see, it's also going to give you a similar bump in quality, resulting in a much cleaner and crisper video. As I said earlier, unless you want to film something with a lot of movement, you should probably use this camera for video every single time. Moving on, we also have a 2X mode, which doesn't actually take pictures from a different camera. These photos are the main camera photos you saw earlier, but with a small zoom applied by the phone before you take the picture. So yeah, this means that the 2X photos are going to look almost identical to the 1X photos from the main camera. Although you're probably going to lose some detail caused by the electronic zoom. And I'm going to say it one more time, the main lens, it's the best one by far. It's got more megapixels, a bigger sensor, a better sensor, better colors. Even when it's zoomed in on the 2X mode, it's surprisingly good. It's, it's better than most other dedicated zoom lenses of the competition, of course, it, with similar prices. My advice is that you use the main lens or 1X mode and 2X mode 90% of the time to take most of your pictures and you save the ultra wide camera for those very specific moments when you need to take like a very wide picture, like a group photo. When it comes to night mode, I'm going to be very clear, okay? You should never, never, never use the ultra wide camera to take pictures at night. You're only going to take pictures of absolute darkness and maybe a blurry light if you're lucky. As I said earlier, this camera doesn't really go beyond group photos at broad daylight. But the main camera though, with a way bigger sensor, can receive a lot more light, and it can turn what originally was just a black square into a picture where you can at least see and distinguish objects from one another. On the 2X mode, since it uses the same lens, you're going to see great results too, although a little bit worse than on 1X mode because of the crop applied by the phone. But hey, 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 wait a minute. I've only been talking about two cameras this whole time, the ultra wide and the main lens, which also acts as the zoom lens. Where here in the back of the phone, there's four cameras. Well, no, this phone doesn't have four cameras, although it looks, as you can see, like it has four cameras because there's four holes. But two of those holes are actually complementary sensors to do other stuff. One of them is a two megapixel macro lens that can take macro pictures. For those who don't know, macro pictures are pictures where you get the phone very close to the object, so you get a lot of detail. The problem is that this macro camera has very bad quality, so you're probably gonna get better results by using the main lens and zooming in. And the other black hole that looks like a camera is a depth sensor that's there to measure distance between objects and your phone. Then it sends all of that information to the other cameras for them to take better pictures. As you can see, when you focus an object that's close to the camera, what's in the background gets a little blurry, which is what usually happens with professional cameras that have way bigger sensors. This effect is only possible thanks to the depth sensor. 
And of course, yes, as I said at the beginning of the video, we also have to talk about selfies. I think the overall quality is fine. There's not crazy detail, but lighting is okay and it's eight megapixels. I actually think the selfie camera is an overall better camera than the ultra wide. I guess because there's a lot of people making TikToks nowadays. So even on budget phones, we're starting to see decent selfie cameras. If you need a phone that gets the job done, a phone that works, and you don't wanna spend money on any fancy features that make phones way more expensive than they need to be, this is your phone, the Galaxy A13, which, as I said earlier, has a very juicy price on Amazon. You'll find a direct link in the description.